<laughs> All right, well, good morning, everybody. It is, uh, it's pretty early. Um, this is the last day and pretty much done. Um, basically, what had happened was, uh, unfortunately, our uh, check airman got sick today. Uh, it was my sim partner's day to go for his loft. I just did mine. So I may not be here for his loft. I'll probably get seat support, so I'll be out of here. But a lot of you guys were asking about uh, kind of how the training was and what it was like. Uh, you saw the earlier video just kind of highlighting what the training was up to then and some of the devices that we have. Uh, I'll just give an overall uh, kind of uh, quick assessment of kind of everything that happened. Uh, you notice I, I haven't been you know, doing much as far as YouTube or Instagram just because I wanted to stay kind of laser focused on my training and and uh, there there wasn't a whole lot of time to do anything else but go to the gym eat and train so that was kind of cool um, staying focused was kind of a big thing uh, on this knowing uh, your box items and uh, kind of this QRC um, we have these briefing cards that are in there and of course the QRH. So tons of tons of material to do. Not uh, and not even including just this stuff, which is a lot already. We have our FOM, our GOM, our IFOM. I mean, there was tons of manuals for us to go through and kind of be familiar with. Now again, you don't have to memorize the manuals uh, in any training that you're doing. You don't have to memorize the manuals. You just need to know where. Uh, it is and have kind of a little bit of a general working knowledge. So that's what I worked on uh, while I was here is trying to get my general knowledge up. Um, not so much to know the exact numbers here and there, but actually to know where to find that and in what manual, because again, there are several different manuals. So um, also when we're talking about uh, being in the sim phase, because we are in the sim phase, this is where we would brief before we head out to that simulator out there, which is our sim 8 that was our sim for for the entire time that we're here so the biggest thing about being in the sim phase is actually being a good sim partner so what i tried to do and i know my sim partner keltner did was we just tried to be the best fo the best seat support that you can for the person that's going through upgrade because you know we're going through upgrade you're just learning believe it or not moving that three feet uh, kind of messes with you as far as hand and where you are so used to. You develop that muscle memory, especially me over the course of 10 years being in the right seat. Uh, it's different. You're a little more cautious. Um, so when you're seat support, you're you're basically you know flying as an FO. You're doing your job that you normally do, and you are really good at it. So it's kind of metering it back and providing the best support you can as far as like getting things set up in the uh, FMS for. Uh, the captain that's that's getting ready to shoot an approach or whatever, having everything dialed in for him. So all he has to do is brief and you know kind of come up with a game plan because yeah, you're really thinking about kind of the whole. You're the captain of the team, so you're thinking about what plays next, right? And how it affects you know us up front, people in the back, our crew in the back, you know, crew downstairs or uh, downstairs, the crew that's on the ground, you know, receiving the airplanes. The, dispatchers, the meteorologists, everybody, you're, you're kind of in this mode of, okay, I make this decision, it affects this, or I need to get more information from this person to better understand the situation so I can make my decision. So your brain, your helmet is on fire in the, uh, in the left seat. So basically being in the right seat, um, whenever you're going through sim session is be the best support that you can. So if you're supporting your uh, your fellow buddy who's going through captain upgrade, be the best first officer you can. If you're going through typewriting school, um, get in the books as much as you can. Know the airplane so you can be the best support whether you're, that person is going in the right seat or the left seat. So that would be my one nugget of information. But um, we are, uh, actually I told you, unfortunately we're not gonna be able to do my sim partner's second half of his training today, or actually the last portion of it. Um, so, the good news is we'll be able to get into the sim. I can kind of show you guys what we're uh, what we're doing. Um, the big thing about the sim, hey, there he is. The big thing about the sim is you know full motion, all that good stuff. It's going to be kind of hard for me to kind of actually show you without you know I got to hold this and then. You know, kind of, kind of operate the sim a little bit. Actually, Keltner's going to operate the sim, so it'll be a little 
unusual because it won't be the typical CRM scenario that we are in there. We'll show you kind of a little bit of the maneuvers and kind of some of the stuff that we did. So let's go. Get it, never going back. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. All right, guys, so let's get into the sim. So again, we've got tons of sims out here. Our sim was number eight. Actually, you can probably see it up here. Sim eight. We are in the sim basically the whole time uh, with our showtime of being 5.30. <laughs> so I will introduce my sim partner. He is a great, he was just a great human being. Uh, let alone great pilot and all that good stuff. But Keltner out here at hey, Southwest. So Keltner is actually one of our project pilots as well. So he works on the EFB program and puts out a lot of good stuff. So we have him to thank for a lot of the uh, EFB programs that we have. So um, just fortunate enough to uh, be able to go through training with them. And yeah, we've been kind of working at it. But anyways, let me show you what the uh, sim panel looks like. Again, I showed you this earlier. It's basically dialing death back here. These guys can freeze you, push you back. They do uh, anything here. They can bring up emergencies. Um, so this is how we learn. Um, whether it's different systems that they need to put on the airplane, we tell you, hey, taxi to the this pink spot if we're doing low vis, you know, here in Seattle, it's kind of set up for that. But they're manipulating all kinds of malfunctions in here. They can pull up everything. So. Um, all the training that we get, being in the uh, airplane, we get in the sim. So it's not the first time that we see the situation kind of manifesting itself. Um, so uh, here's kind of what the visuals look like. It is awesome. For all you simmers out there, this is like the ultimate sim. Even with our ops agent right there kind of hanging out ready for us to get pushed back. So. There's actually a, a tug that you can bring up and we simulate everything. So we'll run through basically uh, what we're supposed to do today is called the loft. And can you remember what that stands for? Line oriented flight training. There you go. Yeah. Line oriented flight training. It's like the military. We have acronyms that actually, that is the meaning now is the acronym instead of, you know, small the whole thing but anyways the loft is supposed to simulate hey you've just shown up here's your paperwork everything works in real time there's no fast forwarding there's no repositioning so if an emergency comes up we have to pull out the log book that would be right in here we'd have to write up the situation you know we simulate a phone call to dispatch to get patched into maintenance we do it all from from showing up to the gate to getting pushed back yep pre-flight in the airplane and we just run through a scenario so the Czech airman who would be sitting at the uh, instructor console back there will set up a scenario and then we'll run through it and he's just sitting there um, evaluating how we handle certain situations um, in the debrief that's where that's where the learning really occurs is hey you did this what were you thinking on that or wh with this situation did you ever think of this? So it's just to, to gain our knowledge a little bit more. Um, again, it's new to us. We've been in this seat for a long, 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 long time. But, uh, you know, it's different when you just move right over to that seat. So we'll show you some of the maneuvers that we did uh, today and just kind of show you a little bit about what our training is like here at the Southwest Airlines Training Center. Well, let me, uh, I don't know if you can see me, but here's what I look out through. Uh, learning this HUD, so I don't know if you guys can see that. Kind of see it a little bit. You got to sit just right to see the symbology in the HUD. That's all the stuff that's up there on the HUD. So this is what I spent a lot of my time trying to learn. And uh, what we'll do today is we'll just go over kind of like a, a takeoff and I'll show you a landing. Some of the stuff I can't show you in the real airplane, I know because, uh, you know, them the rules. So, but what I can do is I can show you it in the sim. And today we are at Seattle and you can see it's, uh, it's pretty close on the representation of what Seattle looks like. Uh, we're sitting on one six left for takeoff. 
Yeah, and the visuals are really good. Trying to simulate as best we can the real environment. So what we're gonna show you is just kind of a, a typical takeoff. So whenever I, I stop the camera, this is kind of what we're doing uh, on the takeoff. And we'll show you a little bit. It's in the sim, so we're good to go with that. But uh, yeah, we'll show you this. Well, now that uh, I'm in a different seat, you know, things are a little bit different, but the procedures are all the same. I'm just in another crew position. So learning the HUD, I've got my HUD set up. Um, I would do a ding to the flight attendants in the back, letting them know that we are ready for takeoff. Um, from there, I do my throttle burst. That lets us know that the configuration is not correct. So my parking brake was on. My flaps are not set. See, there's a, a lot of a lot of things that we would catch in the uh, checklist if we weren't properly configured. So the flaps are configured. Let's see. Yep. So we do the throttle burst just for that to make sure that the airplane is configured, that we set our flaps properly, that our parking brake is not set, you know, and our speed brakes aren't out. So those are the big things. So I ding them. I'll set up my uh, navigation LNAV, VNAV, and auto throttle. I get clear for takeoff. All these lights come on, so we're nice and bright. Bring the uh, throttles up to about 40% N1s. Let the engine stabilize, and then we'll advance the power to take off power and then we're rolling. So it's up to 40%. I press my toga button. It'll set the power. So I'll say set power. The FO sets the power. My hands come back on the throttles. And all I'm doing is just focus down the runway. I'm looking through my hood. I can see my B1 coming up. Five knots prior, call B1 and rotate. So here we go. We got positive right, I call for landing gear up. I go and put the gear up. And I'm back inside my HUD just following my uh, flight path. So at about a thousand feet, now I'm climbing out at a pretty steep angle. At about a thousand feet, I'll call him for set speed. So he'll hit this, set the speed to the up bug, the flaps up speed. And I'll pitch the nose down to get to that speed. As I'm passing the flap operating range, I'll bring the flaps up to one. Passing the flap at one speed, I'll bring it up. Flaps are up. Now again, that's all the first officer's duties. And then we end up climbing out. So I'll bring my power back. And we'll just kind of fly around a little bit. So we're on downwind. It's kind of like my tanker days. Uh, we would do touch and goes at William Gateway called it Willie back in the day. But uh, in the tanker, we would be downwind, we'd start configuring the airplane, and we'd do a touch and go with it. It's pretty funny. So, bring the power back, we'll slow it on up. All right, so right here, we're in the flap operating range. I'm gonna bring the flaps to five again. This is gonna be um, what the first officer's duties or the pilot not flying's duties is gonna be. In this case, it would be the first officer. We bring the flaps to five, we set our speeds to the flaps five speed. You'll see that come up here on your panel. That's what we shoot for. So, flaps five. Just trying to slow us down. I'll start making our turn to base. Boeing field down there, so that's a pretty good base turn. Spacing wise to get into Seattle. So we grab landing gear down and flaps to 15. Speed comes back, set that flaps 15 speed. Base leg, gear down, flaps are 50. Our final flaps are going to be 30, so that's typically what we land with. It's a shorter runway, we'll go to flaps 40. But Seattle's nice, nice and long. And what I'm finding out in this HUD, I get to cheat a little bit. I can see the three degree line. So I'll just hold what I got here. We got gear down. Let's be 
prefix arm, gear down, flaps are set. We run a before landing checklist. Make sure everything is configured right. Now it's just aim point airspeed to the runway. So you can see the Bazzi's on, on uh, one dot low, correcting. So I'm just gonna, instead of climbing, I'm just gonna hold what I got here. And there you go, there's the Bazzi. So now I push my nose back down, try to capture that. Just fly straight to the runway. Aim point airspeed, just like in a Cessna. We're looking at airspeed, we're looking at our aim point. Is it shifting? Is it going up? Is it going down? And we're just, it's easy in this HUD because I could just put the uh, pipper basically right on the, uh, the stripes, the captain scores down there. So, it'll give me a, a countdown at 150. Or 150. 30. Pulling the power back. 10. There's the idle. Touchdown. Speed brakes come out, thrust reversers come out, go to full, and I'm slowly getting on the brakes. At 60 knots, we stow the speed brakes, and then that's it. We don't touch anything on the airplane until we're clear of the stripes, taxiing on in. So here in Seattle, we'll take uh, November here. Right. And once I clear this white stripe of the runway, I can call flaps up. I push my speed brakes in. The first officer brings the flaps all the way up and he runs his uh, after our flaps up cleanup checklist. So he runs a flow, make sure everything is configured for us to taxi back to the gate. And uh, for our captain training here, we actually taxi the airplane to the gate. There's a marshaler there and all that other good stuff. That's uh, we just took the 737 up and did a pattern with it. So I hope you guys like that. But um, that was kind of similar to what we do. Obviously, we, we go up, we do a little bit more air work. We'll set up an approach on the uh, on our FMS and brief it up. We do a lot of briefings. Um, if we have an emergency, we do a lot of stuff uh, getting into the checklist, a lot of crew coordination. And, uh, you know, the, the flying stuff we've done, and that's kind of secondary. You're, we're expected to fly, right? Um, it's all the other stuff. It's all the procedures that you do, the procedures to do an approach, uh, using this thing to go down to Cat 3 minimums, which is 50 feet above the runway, uh, is our minimum on that approach. So using this guy all the way down to almost landing, um, because as you saw, 50 feet, we we pretty much start our flare, so it, it's really low. Um, we're on the B gates here at uh, in Seattle, and we were using this airplane. I'm parking at uh, Bravo Eight, so I'll go to Bravo Eight. Part of the uh, after landing flow is lights and uh, APU starting to come on on his side. He'll turn his strobe and uh, wing light off. Once the uh, APU is off, we'll bring it on the bus here. Again, that's all part of the uh, FO's flow. The captain is just basically, as I'm learning, looking outside, making sure we don't run over anything or hit anybody. And you can see the simulator is really good because it actually shows trucks. It shows uh, movement on the ground because that's what happens out there. There's baggage loaders. There's there's all kinds of people moving about. The, as you guys know, the airport is a very busy place. So as a captain, you're kind of looking out, making sure you're not going to hit anything. And the first officer is doing that as well, backing them up. So here's Bravo 8, where, we're, uh, where we ended up parking a lot of times in our uh, training. And I'll just pull us up to the J line and hold there. But we would have a marshaler actually out there and learning how to taxi the sim or taxi the airplane you know in the sim it's uh it's pretty challenging so all right i'm just gonna hold right here since we don't have a marshaller and set my parking brake so that was it uh i hope you guys liked it that's it's as, about as real as it gets without being in the real thing now i'll finish this training which i have done and I'll be uh, going out to my uh, UOE, my operational experience. I got to get right around 25 hours of flight time. 
And I've got a special guest with that. I'll, uh, I'll show you who that is. Um, I'm not sure how much I'll do probably uh, in the debrief and the briefings. I'll let you guys know, obviously we can't film in the cockpit, but um, let you guys know kind of how that uh, operating experience goes. It should be pretty fun. Oh, so we actually have here in Seattle, thanks Keltner. Keltner pulled up the, uh, we have uh, a parking assistant up there. It's basically a computer that shows where you're at. Um, Seattle has one and what was that? San Francisco. San Francisco has another one. So you could basically, there's one marshaller down on the ground, but we actually look up to the assistant, assisted device. You could see I'm to the left, so I'm correcting, correcting, 240 feet, 210 feet, 180. Okay, I'm right on the line. 150, 120, 9, 6, 3, waiting for the big stop stop all right I stop set my parking brake once um, my generators are my APUs up and running double check to make sure that I have good freaks and bolts that means it's good we'll put it on the bus I'll shut down the motors Then I give them the sign that, hey, the motors are shut off, and I have my parking brake set. And, hey, there's our ops agent again. So, we'll simulate pulling up the uh, jet bridge, and we'll do our uh, parking checklist. So, we'll make sure the airplane's all put away. Buttons are reset to the, the position for a through flight. If this is going to be a through flight, we'll actually get the airplane ready for another flight, or we're going to go to the hotel and we shut the airplane down and bring it to one blue light as we call it which is ground power available but all right hey guys bonus footage we're going to show you actually cat 3 approach so cat 3 approach into uh into seattle um, we got kind of it set up here you can see you know even in the sim we can we can set up our bluetooth that shows us moving along the uh the plate as if we would in the real airplane so I've got my uh, HUD set up for this Cat 3 approach. Kind of show you, see if you can see it come out. Uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but hey, we're going to give it the old college try. So uh, I am all set for landing, and I'll try to do this flying thing. Nope, let's see. Yeah, it's going to be hard for me to show you what I see in the HUD. Uh, you, you really can't see the HUD, but I'll show you kind of from a jump seater's perspective, what it looks like. We run our before landing checklist, which would be speed brake is on green light, landing gear is down three green, and flaps are 40 green light. So we would be clear to land. It would be a 1,000 foot call. And I would say airspeed 139 and my sink rate is 750. Basically in the slot, and verify that we're stabilized for the approach. The FO's call would actually be 1,000 feet and A3 mode, just to ensure that we're on the A3 mode, which is the Cat 3 approach mode. If we're not in that, we'd go around. The FO would say 500, it would guard the throttles. A little bit different than an actual, just a regular ILS. Turn off the autopilot and hand from here. Getting close to the landing, I can actually see a, a representation of the runway in my HUD. But I'm just keeping, keeping that donut in the donut. We're at 200 feet, this would be a normal Cat one approach. 100. 100. 50. 50 is our minimums. 30. 10. Woo! Speed brake comes out. Thrust reversers are coming out. He's calling extend deploy. And we would stop on the runway. I have, a, I have symbology in here that will keep me in the runway if if let's say the uh, the weather went to zero and we went in a fog bank, I just have to keep that 
that vertical bar in the notch. If you guys can see that, but we'll stop straight ahead here. But you can see with the technology, you can fly it all the way down to 50 feet. Some planes have auto land and you can actually, the airplane makes a landing. So, but you can see we're straight right down the runway. It's kind of foggy out. And this is what happens in Seattle. It gets foggy like this. Sacramento does the same thing. Um, but, you know, again, we have the technology that we can land in weather that is basically down to very low vis. That's it, guys. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, this is kind of fun, just chopping in and going. Th a special thanks to Keltner setting this up. Nice work. <laughs> nice work, everybody. <laughs> we, work, uh, we, uh, you know, again, we had some free time, so, you know, Keltner was kind enough to say, hey, let's hop in the sim and, you know, we'll, we'll do some flying around. So, hope you guys liked it, and uh, we'll see you again on another video. Hopefully that will be with UOE. Uh, again, I, I, I try to focus on, obviously, the training that comes first and, you know, all that good stuff. But if I have time, I will let you guys know how it goes because uh, you guys are my audience and you guys are awesome. All right. Legends. See ya. <laughs>